You are watching XS LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the October 17, 2022 meeting of the Michigan City Board of Works and Safety. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting of the Michigan City Board of Public Works and Safety to order the 17th day of October, 2022. President Mayor Dwayne Perry, Mr. Michael Vincent, and myself, Virginia Keating, we have a quorum. First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular hybrid Zoom meeting of October 3rd, 2022, and the executive session of September 29th, 2022. Are there any changes or corrections? None here, Madam Chair. No, I make a motion we accept minutes. Support. And I call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is a special purchase. Marty Corley, Michigan City Police Department, is requesting approval to trade in nine older police vehicles and purchase one 2022 Ram 2500 ProMaster car van in the amount of $22,690. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Um, I sent in my request, uh, and it, you'll see there are approximately seven uh, 04 Crown Vicks, one uh, Chevy Trailblazer. All the vehicles are under the year of 2011, majority of them are like 2009, 2005. Um, Trading those in, the total uh, purchase for the van would have been 40690 40, um, with the trade-ins for the old Crown Vicks. And the Chevy Trailblazer plus the trade-in for the old paddy wagon uh, brings the total price down to twenty-two thousand six hundred and ninety. And would you explain the funding of the remainder? Uh, the remaining funding would be out of DEA forfeiture funds. Thank you. Are there any public comments? Any board comments? None here, Madam Chair. Here. I make a motion we accept. Support. Then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Next item is also uh, um, a special purchase. Marty Corley, Michigan City Police Department is requesting approval to outfit the newly purchased 2022 Ram 2500 ProMaster cargo van with Way Mirror uh, receiving $25,880.82 to equip and Mad Rappers 5,500 for a total of three, uh, I'm sorry, $31,380.82. Why don't you explain? Yes, ma'am. So uh, in Waymire is uh, who, who we use for all of our vehicles compatible with everything that we use in our fleet. Um, they outfit all our vehicles. Um, so to outfit the, the van with the transport compartment, um, they'll use, we'll use them. They'll bring, they have the products for us. Um, so that comes to a total with, with the whole total purchase of all the products needed to outfit the van properly with the $25,880.82. And then also the vehicle um, unfortunately comes all white. Our vehicle, our fleet is black, um, so it will match our vehicle fleet. Um, again, that's $5,500 uh, 55, yeah, $5, to um, wrap the van all black and put the decals that will match the rest of our fleet in, at the Michigan City Police Department. Something I didn't ask you on your last uh, petition was, what is the purpose of this van? What are you going to be using it for? It's uh, it's our well, 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 what you would know as a paddy wagon, prisoner transport van. Okay. Basically, we will use it to transport prisoners back and forth from Michigan City to Port County Jail. Okay. Also, there's times when um, we have prisoners that become unruly and um, it's unsafe for transporting our vehicles. Um, we then uh, bring the paddy wagon out to the scene, transport those those people. Sometimes there might be a a situation where we have a large amount of people that need to be transported at one time. We use the paddy wagon for that. Thank you for that explanation. Yes, ma'am. Are there any public comments? Are there any board comments? None here, Madam Chair. No, I make a motion that we approve. Support. And I'll call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. you. Perry. Next item is the opening of the bids for the 2022 lease of the backhoe for the Michigan City Street Department. Do you want to ask if there's anyone else that would like to present a bid? And if not, I was waiting for you to tell me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> is, there, is there anyone here present who would like to uh, present a bid today? 
Okay, then uh, move to close the bids. Motion to close the bids. Second. Call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. We've received two bids. The first is from McAllister. <clears throat> the bid requested uh, numerous lease options uh, for a two year lease option, it would be fifty five thousand. $24.37 per year. For a three-year option, $43,090.99. For a four-year, $36,621.23. And for a five-year, would be $32,471.74. The second bid is from uh, McCain. For a two-year lease, well, <clears throat> There's two bids in here, one for a low residual lease and one for a high residual lease. Uh, the low residual lease has the two-year option of $194,976, uh, three-year option $199,980, four-year option $204,672, and a five-year option of $209,280. For what they're calling a high residual lease, um, $136,152. Uh, for the three year lease, $152,640. For the four year, $164,112. And for the five year, $173,640. Thank you. Is that all that we received then? Yes, I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. Then I'll entertain a motion to assign the bids for review and tabulation to the legal department and the Michigan City Street Department. I will make that motion, Madam Chair. I'll second. And I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you, Blake. Um, the uh, next item on the agenda is the professional services contract. Shannon Easton, Michigan City Park Department, is requesting to amend the Singing Sands Trail Agreement between the City of Michigan City and Premier Engineering for additional professional service contract ex inspections in the amount of $46,500 due to several accidents damaging the uh, trail. Anybody want to address this? Brad, you want to address this? Or, oh, I see. Shannon, I didn't see you back there. Thank you. Brad Minnick is here. If um, you'd like any details, but mainly this is because the contract and that is still open almost a year later because of. Oh. Morning, Shannon Easton, Assistant Park Superintendent. Um, this contract has been extended with NDOT due to, I believe it's 14 vehicle accidents along the trail, um, which requires our construction inspector, Romero, Brad Minnick, um, to complete daily reports, go out after post-rain events, 
So currently we are waiting for one signal to be replaced. It was out on an eight week lead time. Um, we did ask in that to close the contract with exception and just let this, the contract be closed except for the signal. Um, they denied that request. So we are required to keep a construction inspector on site until it's closed out. The contract total is 46,500. INDOT and NERPSI will participate and pay 80% of that expense. So the city will need to pay 9,300. Um, I have verified with the controller. We do have that money still in our trail grant fund. And then Brad Minix here, if you have any questions about the contract. <clears throat> Good morning, board. Brad Minix, Premier Engineers. Just wanted to add one thing. Um, we're actually adding two additional signage um components on the west end of the county line and uh, added that um early last month the the flashing signals yes so that was excuse me inadvertently omitted from the design package from five years ago and and end up just brought it to our attention uh last month so we're adding that scope as well Okay. Are there any uh, board questions? No questions here, Madam Chair. Just comment. Good job. Raj, Hannah, good job. Thank you. Okay. Are there any public comments? Hearing none, then uh, do I hear a motion? Oh, go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve. Support. And I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is a uh, vehicle lease request. Deputy Chief Frank Reback, Michigan City Fire Department is requesting to lease two vehicles from the Laporte Chrysler, a 2022 Dodge Durango police pursuit vehicles for a three year term in the amount of $40,680 for both vehicles. Is there anyone here who wish to address this? Deputy Chief Frank Reback, Michigan City Fire. Uh, does the board have any questions? You the, express your need for this. Oh, I'm sorry. The, uh, as I stated in my letter, we have a 2010 Ford Fusion that I'm using right now, Deputy Chief, and a 2008 Dodge Durango that my PIO is using. They're just older vehicles that are in a constant state of disrepair. They've been needed to be replaced for a while now. And we also added a second Deputy Chief in January. He's using my car, so that's how I ended up with the Fusion. So it's just, it's kind of, something's been needed for a while. But now we finally have the means and the way to do it. So, Amber, do you have any comments? Uh, no additional comments other than um, Chief did follow our small purchasing policy and see quotes from uh, three vendors. So everything is in order. Thank you. Then are there, are there any public comments? Any board comments? Uh, I would just say I have one question for the Chief. And by your point, I guess, what, why do we... Why does the fire department need police pursuit vehicles? Uh, that's what we've used in the past. Short answer. Okay. Um, we do drive the calls quickly. We use the brakes harder than we would in a passenger vehicle. You know, there's there's things like that that we have to use. So we, that's what we've used in the past, and it's always worked out well for us. So I figure why not continue to use them? And actually, okay. price-wise, if you because I was able to look at some prices at the Michigan City dealership here in town, price-wise, they're actually a little cheaper. Believe it or not. That's good so, enough for me. Thanks, yep. Chief. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, do you have comments? Okay, then do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Support. And I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair Vosai as well. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the payroll docket for October 7, 2022, a city payroll of $669,626.45. And a claims docket of October 17th, 2022, municipal claims of $954,051.79, CDBG, that's Community Development Block Grant, $11,074.24, Health and Life Insurance Fund, $246,148.59 for total claims of $1,211,274.62. We have a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve as read. Support. And then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. 
Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next is the uh, pending items list. First item is Kathy Stransky, 223 Barker Avenue, was requesting a street light. Uh, I believe, Brad, that you can enlighten us on this. Yes, I contacted um, NIPSCO last week to get an update, and the gentleman was out of office. So I drove by there this morning, and there was no activity. And Kathy said she's not seen NIPSCO out there. So my recommendation would be to leave it on the pending items list for the 1st of November meeting. Okay, thank you very much for that. Next item is Tommy Kalavik. 1316 Ohio Street requesting the restriping of Ohio Street from 11th Street to Garfield Street. And Brad, you were going to talk to uh, uh, Mr. Doyle about this. Is that true? Yes, we spoke about it a couple weeks ago, and he was going to add it to some paving work that he had uh, plans for. Mr. Doyle, do you have anything to say about this? I would call it an inspecting plan. Point. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just keep it on our list. Okay, next item is the uh, matter of the uh, hor uh, horizontal directional drilling policy that was brought up by Gail Nyblum. And before us today is a revised policy. Thank you, Amber, for preparing that. That was a difficult job. Uh, does the board have any questions regarding this? I'm here, Madam Chair. Mike, do you have any questions? Okay. Then if not, then do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve and second. Okay, then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair Wilson as well. Next item on the agenda is oh, Brad Madam Minnick. President, do you want to remove this from your pending list then? Oh, as well? certainly. Do I have a motion to remove from the pending item list? Motion to remove from pending item list. Support. And I'll call for the vote again. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. All right, moving on. Brad Minnick, Premier Engineers Limited, uh, is requesting a fee proposal for Woodland Avenue crash analysis. Actually, we've received the uh, crash analysis from you, have we not? Correct. Okay. Uh, do you want to uh, explain anything regarding that? That's a lengthy report. I would. Uh your attention to page 28 which discusses next steps um, from the 14 intersections and segments analyzed there are two intersections and one segment that collected a substantial amount of crashes when compared to the typical volume of crashes found at the remaining intersections and segments found along the south woodland avenue corridor it lists the intersections to be Greenwood Avenue and Southwood Avenue, Woodland Avenue, intersection of Cool Spring Avenue and Woodland, and also Woodland Avenue uh, from Cool Spring to Greenwood, um, as well as the uh, crashes analyzed from 2016 to 2022. So the next step would be additional data collection, which I alluded, alluded to last time. Um, that would be traffic counts, as well as uh, signal timings and phasing sequence. The signal timings and phasing sequence, I would contact Midwestern Electric and have them pull that data. And then the traffic counts would be uh, self-performed by Premier Engineers. We talked about last time it being pieces of the puzzle. These uh, additional pieces, the traffic counts and the signal timings being two more pieces and that would drive a proposed recommendation for improvement uh, based on that information. So, um, and then the rest of the report gives uh, specifics about the crashes and the severity of them as well. So at this time, I'd just like to know if you wanna move forward with the analysis, in which case I could bring a um another proposal to the next meeting to uh quantify the cost of next steps or if you want to table it i know we talked about uh the winter months being a, a good time to 
do more analysis with the expectation that you could have plans to do something for construction next year would be my recommendation. Board okay. discussion? Um, I think this is an important item. Uh, Woodland Ave is a very busy, heavily traveled street, uh, as was um, determined and discussed when we were talking about the, the permitting of the uh, housing project on Woodland Ave right by Walnuts Road. So I would move that we continue this this uh, crash study. I'll second. Okay, then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Let's just leave this on the new pending items list. I would have a norm, I would have a few proposal the first of November okay. meeting. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is Rodney McCormick's request for cameras and security lights in the neighborhoods of 11th and 10th and York Street for safety. And we had determined that we wanted to revisit this today. However, we were really um, waiting for the placement of the Flock Raven equipment. So I don't know if we're ready to address this today. I don't think we are, Madam Chair. And let's just leave this on. The, 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 the entity that's providing the Flock Raven system, they're also going to be a big part of the design of where they're going to be placed based on the equipment's right. ability yes. to perform. So I would make a motion we wait. Okay, we'll just leave this on the pending items list then. The next item on the agenda, on the pending items list, uh, Councilman Don Prespolinski addressed the board with concerns from the public concerning the traffic islands by Blue Chip Casino. And Brad, you were working on this as well, were you not? That's correct. I drove through there this morning and happy to report that the tubular markers had been installed by you that. So you could remove it off the pending items list. Okay, do I have a motion then to remove from the pending items list? Motion to remove. Second. A call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. That concludes the business portion of this meeting. Yeah. Uh, that concludes the business portion of this meeting and we are here now for an appeal hearing uh, filed by Brett and Tisdale, CYB Real Estate LLC. He's requesting a hearing to appeal a vector control uh, citation on parcel number 46012518000200022. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Um, and uh, uh, would you please give us your name and address? Brett and Tisdale, 301 Friar Road, Michigan City. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're ready for this uh, hearing. Is somebody from Vector Control here? Please come up here. Please go to the mic and state your name and Steve Hahn from Vector Control. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, let me preface matters first by explaining that Mr. Antisdale is appealing the citation uh, from the um, uh, or ordinance number, uh, I'm sorry, it's a municipal ordinance section 102-1 concerning weeds and grass that grow over six inches on the property at 811 Highway 212 um, the citation was dated 9-20-2022, and Mr. T Antisdale had 10 days from that date to appeal. He filed his appeal with the clerk, and ha I have a file stamp copy before me, uh, on the 30th of September, which means that I am therefore finding that this appeal is timely and that we are ready to proceed. Uh, for the sake of continuity, I'm going to ask you to present for the vector control. Please explain exactly what happened. You want me to swear? Okay. Would you please raise your hand? Your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. All right. Proceed, please. Okay. We, as as you stated, 920 of this year, we served uh for section 102.1, which is weeds or grass over six inches tall. Um, I think we gave some pictures, I believe, or emailed over 
Um, it was well over the six inches. Um, we actually um, went to uh, serve a continuous abatement and uh, my assistant uh, had uh, spoke to the resident, I guess, and uh, basically just said if we could make it look a little nicer, um, you know, we would be okay with that. And they said something along the lines of wanting to let nature reclaim it. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm battling a cold. And um, so that's where we stand at right now is uh, if we allow nature to reclaim this property, all the other properties in Michigan City will want to be reclaimed by nature also to avoid cutting the grass. Uh, we had Terry Bright, who's the turf manager from ServiceScape, go and look at the property. And he determined it is just strictly field grass, field grass only. There are no um, vegetation on it that is considered anything close that that would be just field grass. Uh, field grass will grow about two and a half feet tall, and then it will get heavy and it will fold over and then it will start growing back up to that height again. Um, because of that, it's going to have mice, rats, rabbits, other varmints that will bed down in there and the neighbors surrounding it will then have issues. That's really all I have on that. Thank you. Um, I have before me some pictures. You also included pictures uh, with your response or with your, a copy of your notice um, are these uh, pictures accurately depicting the situation there? I provided those, ma'am. The ones you're holding, I provided this okay. morning. You provided some with your yes. Yes, he, he, he yes I have. I have. Yes, and and they are accurate. Yes, they are. Okay. All right. Do you have anything else to add? I do not. Thank you. Please, you may present now. Uh, the reason we were we were saying that we would like it to just be reclaimed back by nature is that we don't have any immediate future plans to develop the property. And the property, as you can see in the pictures, is maintained 30 feet off of any structure and is also boarded, bordered by wooded acreage and two creek beds. There's one creek bed on the south end of the property and another on the west end of the property. So the grass growing up isn't going to bring any further pests that aren't already there from the wooded acres that's already boarding with property. How long have you owned this property? Uh, about two years, ma'am. Have you ever cut it? Yes, we were, we were planning on developing it, but when cost of materials skyrocketed, it just wasn't, it wasn't in the budget to develop the property. Okay, and when was the last time you cut it? It would have been earlier this year. Um, any board member want to question this gentleman or the other gentleman? Uh, I have no, uh, there, there are no homes bordering this property in the 20 adjacent property lines. Or no there is another one um, on Springland. I think it's 2209 Springland and it's, I'd say, 50 to 100 feet from the the property in question, the area in question, and that's the creek that actually splits, splits those two properties. Okay, so you have street road bordering it on one boundary. Yes, sir. A, a house, a property on on the other. What about the other two? No, it's just wooded acreage. And this is all within the city limits. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mike, do you have any questions? I, I just driving by, it looks like you have it trimmed back from property lines. We did trim it back. We did trim it back from the street um, per vector control's request. Um, it was hanging in the street. You know, we we own that. That's it shouldn't be hanging off into the street. Um, if we can maintain it ten feet back from the street, because the the issue, you know, going to what this gentleman said was, yeah, if we keep mowing it. It's currently field grass now, but the trees will populate just through natural, you know, natural ways. 
you know, I see it in my yard all the time. If I don't get out there and mow, the acorns start to grab root and they will ultimately grow. But if I mow them, then nothing grows up. So if I can maintain it 10 feet back from the street, so not to cause any issues with the traffic, ultimately nature will take it over. But it has been maintained prior to, prior to now. It, is that, what is your intentions going forward? You stated that your original intention was developed property with another home? Yes, sir. And then- Yeah, it's about, about a half acre. Of, I think it's just under a half acre. And then fast forward, let's say five years, mm -hmm. is that possibly still your intention? Probably not, just given the current state that we're in with building material costs. Um, cement and everything else is doubled in price, if not tripled. So I just assume let it go back and let the woods take it over. Is that a rental area for yes, you? Sir. Yeah, the home is. Mr. Glancy, do you have any uh, uh, recommendations? Uh, it's Mr. Hahn. Actually. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Mr. Glancy's the one who served them. I'm sorry. Um, my recommendation is that we continue the ordinance as written. Um, there are tons of properties throughout the city that you could say are being claimed by nature. Um, as long as we allow that, the neighbors have to put up with it. And I don't believe I would want to live next to any of those properties. So uh, this ordinance is in here for a reason, and we followed it directly for that reason. And I just feel like we're opening up a can of worms for a lot of properties if we make one exception. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I think the board will take this under advisement. We'll uh, discuss it amongst us and we'll come back with our findings at a later time. I have a question for Mr. Hahn, if I okay. could. Oh, go ahead. Hey, was, was this code enforcement due to a complaint of a neighbor or just a drive-by from Vector? We had a complaint in the neighborhood and we when we're responding to a complaint, we'll check the entire neighborhood just to make sure that something's not amiss. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hahn and Mr. Antisdale. Next item on the agenda is our public comment section. Let me preface it by saying that public comment section on this agenda is reserved for matters that do not require board action. Any matter required board action will not be discussed under the public comment section of the Board of Works meetings. All matters that require board action must be placed on the agenda using the forms and procedures available at the clerk's office. In addition, public comment is lit limited to three minutes. All comments are to be addressed to the board president and not to the individual board members. All comments must be germane to and within the mandate and authority of this board. Is there anyone here who wishes to express a uh, comment? Well, hearing none, then I'll move on to board comments. Are there any board comments? None here, Madam Chair. No. Then uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Support. And I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you.